With Black Friday right around the corner, we wanted to create a video that reviews the discount options within Ricochet that you might utilize for Black Friday, but also go through a service called Pixlr, which is a graphic design and photo editing program you can use to create promotional materials for these sales. To start out, access your Ricochet consignment account, go to Preferences, then down to Product, and click on Discounts. Click the orange New Discount button to create a new discount. Now to start out, we are going to name the discount. That way in the discount list, we can easily identify it. So for this example, we're just gonna say Black Friday. We will put in a start date. And then after that, we're gonna uncheck Never Ends and put in an end date. Now, since this is just Black Friday, we'll keep the start date and the end date the same day. Next, we're going to decide when this discount is going to trigger. We can have it automatically applied at the point of sale screen. We can choose to set a coupon code, where if you do do that, you can either type in the code itself or click generate random to make one up. And then you can decide where that discount is going to be applied, at the point of sale, at the web store, or both. Now for coupon codes, they can be added in at the point of sale when you're using the global discount option. And this is a great tool if you have like a military or teacher's discount that happens throughout the year. But since Black Friday could be a high business sale, definitely suggest leaving it on automatically applies. If you're going to do a in-store and then maybe coupon code if you're planning to do that for a web store only discount. For this example, we're just going to choose automatically applies at the point of sale. Next, we do have the discount type, meaning are we going to take a percentage off the sale or a price, meaning flat amount. You can choose whichever one works best for you, but we're going to choose a 20% discount and then in the consignment absorb type, we're gonna change that to store. Meaning when this discount gets assigned to the items, the 20% is gonna be deducted from what the store makes off the sale. If you were to leave it on standard, then you would split that with the consigner. Then of course, if you leave it on consigner, that 20% would be taken out of their profits or their payouts. If you are a vendor-based business or an antique mall-based business, then a lot of times you might do a consigner-based or vendor-based discount, and that would be the option you'd wanna choose. Now, of course, if you do have any retail inventory, it's not gonna matter what option because it's only being taken out of the store's profits. So for this option, we're just gonna go ahead and keep it on store, and then we will keep it on all products, meaning any products being added to the point of sale screen are going to have that discount. Now, you do have a ton of options. You can do it by brands, category, consigner, like we mentioned before with the vendors being able to deduct it based off one specific vendor or group of them. Department, which is more of a hidden field. Some people utilize it to um, specify where items are in the store. Then individual SKUs, as well as the custom drop-down menus, in case you guys are using those. You also can set minimum requirements, meaning you, know, you could keep this on none, so that way all sales have this 20%, or you can decide that a person needs to purchase a specific amount of items or reach a very specific total. Now, the one thing with specific total and what we see people do is they might have a specific total to get a specific price off the sale. Um, some people might just say 20% off everything that we're going through today, but other people might choose to say, if you spend $100, then we'll give you $10 off, something along those lines, completely up to you. Finally, you can set limitations as far as how many um, times this discount can be used. Uh, obviously, we'd probably want to let this be unlimited. Normally, this applies to very specific coupon codes used online. Now, once we hit save, we'll have saved that discount. And if we click back to discounts, we can see it in our current list. So now that we've created that discount, we're going to create some promotional material to share that discount on your social media platforms. 
And to do that, we're going to open up a new tab and go to pixlr.com. So that's pixlr.com. Now, what this is, is a online software program where you can easily edit photos, do graphic design, and a bunch of great stuff. It's very similar to programs like Photoshop, if you're aware of that program, but it's gonna be a lot more streamlined, a lot more user-friendly, and geared towards people who don't have a ton of experience in any of these platforms. Now, this is a free service. You might have to deal with some ads, and if you wanna use any other templates, you'll have to buy them on a one-off basis but they do have a subscription for $7.99 a month, it's not too bad, as well as a 30-day trial. Now, for this example, we're going to use the Pixlr X option. Essentially, there's three main versions of their software, and it's got kind of a Goldilocks feel to it. This one's gonna be a little bit more middle of the road. The Pixlr E is a lot more advanced. It's gonna be very similar looking to Photoshop and the tool layout. And then there's Photo Smash, which is more meant for product photography, um, social media icon images, which one is a great feature, but um, mostly for day-to-day -day use rather than creating promotional materials. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Pixlr X, which is going to bring up the Pixlr X load screen. We can see that I've got a couple of my latest projects or things that I've clicked on. I do have the ability to start a design immediately but I am gonna go over to the template section here to pull out a template to utilize for this. And the best part about this is the template options at the top of the screen where we've got the right pixel ratios for Instagram posts, Instagram stories, or Facebook stories. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click a basic one here, one of the free options, and now it's going to load in the editing screen. Now to start out with, we're going to get you a little bit more comfortable with the layout. And the first thing we're gonna do on the right hand side is show you the layers section. So each one of these pieces here are their own layer and they're stacked on top of each other. So we can see their fake logo is the layer here. We've got a Black Friday sale, which is just text and the, the photo down here of this image. So all of these things are just stackable on top of one another so that way you can easily edit them or rearrange them if need be. On the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna see all of your tools. Now for the most part, this arrange and style tool at the very top will be the option you use the most. You can either add a frame to a photo or the overall image itself, add in text or add in shapes. Now you can feel free to add in additional information, but what we're gonna focus on in this tutorial is gonna be editing the template that already exists. Now, before we get started, also know that you have an undo and redo button at the bottom of the screen. So if you make a mistake, you can easily back up that mistake. And I believe you can do this up to a couple of steps. It isn't just like a control Z where you make it one. And then finally, when you're finished with the project, you'll hit save here. So let's go ahead and make some quick updates to this to show you how you can change one of these templates for your store. So to start out, we can delete any content that we're not going to use. So on this template, we can see that they have a filler logo. Since that's not our company's name, we're just gonna go ahead and click on that once, then click delete on the keyboard. Now, if you do want to add in your store's logo, you absolutely can. You would just want to go over to the add element slash image section on the left-hand side of the screen, then click add media. Now, when you do add things like logos or graphic elements, you do want to try to use a PNG file. What that means is there isn't going to be a background. If you do have a logo JPEG file, what will happen is when that logo gets uploaded, it's going to have that white background normally in the overall shape of the logo itself, like a square or a rectangle. Now, if that does happen, you can just move some of these text fields around and put that logo over the white background here. But if you are planning on updating the color of it, you'd probably want to go with a PNG file or just don't worry about it at all. Now, to update that background color, 
we can go to the layout and template section, click once, and then we can see the background option available here. Now there's a couple of pre-built template colors in case you want to play around with a little bit. And when you do pick any of these colors, you can see a color picker show up below. So that way you can change any of these colors or change it around to your store's colors if you'd like. Now the other element we have here is this yellow rectangle. And that's not going to be a part of the background. It's actually going to be a layer. So I go over to the layers list and scroll all the way to the bottom. I do see that it's available. But on this template, I am seeing a lock. Now what this means is that this layer has been locked, so it can't be easily changed. If I click this, it does open it up. And if I go over to the arrangement and style option, I'm gonna be able to change the type of the shape, change the color of the shape, even change the rotation if I'd like. But for this example, we're just gonna go ahead and make this a different color to better suit your store's color scheme. Now, if we need to edit any of the copy on the template or any of the wording, we can click on top of any of the file to bring up the text option on the left-hand side of the screen. We can double click on the copy or go over to the text bank and update it there. Here we'll also have the option of changing the color, changing the font, as well as update the size of the copy and change the line spacing and letter spacing. Now line spacing is going to be if you're using multiple lines of text like this Black Friday sale. You can reduce the amount of space in between each line. And this will be the same thing with letter spacing, also sometimes referred to as tracking in graphic design. You do want to try to keep an eye on this because letters spaced out too wide can come off cheesy or too much space between each line can kind of destroy the overall aesthetic. Now, if you would like to add in a new layer of text, you can go over to the layer section in the upper right hand corner, click the add layer, and then click the text option. Here you'll be able to add in any information you'd like. Just keep in mind that if you are planning on boosting this post or advertising this post on Facebook or Instagram, they can be a little bit fussy about the amount of copy that you add to an image. They normally suggest keeping it about 20%, so 20% copy to content ratio. I don't know how much they're still enforcing this, but you might get flagged, it might not go through, or they may let you know that it may or may not get flagged during that boosting process. Regardless, try to keep minimal information on the image itself or this graphic itself and add it to the text field in either Facebook or Instagram. Now the final step we'll go through is editing or adding photos to this promotional material. The template is going to have a photo already loaded to it. So if you'd like to edit this photo, you can click on the layer and it'll bring up the adjust screen. Here you can change you know, things like the color, lighting, change the photo to black and white if you'd like. And the other option you can do is click on effect and go through more of an Instagram filter style editing field. We could go ahead and click one of these options which will then give a other set of options to add to it and even be able to scale up or down the amount of the filter. Now, if you would like to remove or replace this photo, we can click on it, click delete to get rid of it, and to upload a photo, if you already have one, you can go to the add element or image section, and then click add media to upload an image, or you can go through Pixlr stock images to try to find one. To do this, click the home button in the upper left hand corner. And then what we're going to do is go down to images. And then we can have the stock image search. And in here, I'm just going to go ahead and type in Black Friday. Now we can see a bunch of options load below that. Uh, nothing's really fitting what I'm looking for, so I'm going to type in gift shop. Then from here, I can go ahead and grab one of these photos. 
Now, once I click on it, it'll upload and say we can either create new or add to current. I'm gonna click add to current and we go back here. We just see this massive photo. And it's cause it's a very large sized photo. If you do have a scrolling bar on your mouse, just go ahead and scroll out to zoom out to be able to see everything. Then grab one of these corners and drag it down. Maybe a little bit offside the current area for the promotional material. Then when you zoom back in, you're gonna have that photo available. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to play around with the template, change the layout of the copy or photos. You can even choose to add in additional shapes. So if you wanted to click the add layer button, choose the shape option, and then maybe make a smaller, thinner rectangle to drop below copy to highlight the text a little bit more. It's completely up to you. Just remember you do have those undo and redo tools at the bottom of the screen. And when you're done, you can go ahead and click save. And also note on this screen, change the quality type to medium. The reason being is you don't want the quality to be too high and affect load time. It isn't going to distort or hurt the image quality in any way. Now, once you've saved that image, you can go back into Pixlr and choose a different template size, maybe an Instagram post or a Facebook post. So that way you can be able to cross promote this sale in Instagram or Facebook stories and reels, but then also promote it within your timeline in Facebook or Instagram.